as a location manager, and then last but not least is notification manager. Uh, if you, most of the guys who have uh, Android phone, they would have seen a little strip on the top. Uh, the, the, the whole goal of the notification manager is to notify the user without interrupting his current activity, what he's doing on the phone. Uh, we'll see again a little more. Okay, so let's come down to what makes your this is the, what makes your Android application. This, 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 these, are, these are the main components what goes uh, into your application to, to, to make it work. Activity, I'll use some. Okay, this is much better. Activities. So here the technical starts, and you need to you try to you'll see those names and everything in your class. Activities, activity is something, a screen, uh, a one screen. So if you need to visualize the activity, think about a mail application. And uh, if I need to, uh, to uh, dispose, uh, if I need to divide my app, mail application, I can potentially think about three different screens. One screen for, for writing an email, second screen is for, for showing that email, and third screen maybe for, you know what, I have made it reverse. <laughs> Because there was some personal stuff, and I took this on last moment. I didn't find any better way to encrypt this. So, <laughs> well, don't look at it carefully. Don't try to decrypt it. Okay. So the third part is that I say, listing the emails, right? So these are the three different activities. So when you, as a programmer, you start thinking about how many activity would ha I would have. Think about the screens you would have. Uh, so this is about activity. We'll see a little more insight when we develop the code. Other part is the services. Services run in the background. They don't have any interface or user interface. They always run in the background. And once, so you can start a service a different way. You can start a service from an activity. So activity will tell that, okay, uh, service you start and then activity goes down and service will, still, will keep running. Uh, Pandora, how many people like Pandora or have used Pandora? Oh my God, that's good. Okay, so Pandora is a typical example of uh, a service. Uh, you would have seen a screen when you bring up the Pandora, that is activity, which brings the service up. And when you go back and, you know, uh, uh, you have a screen like this, in the notification area, you see that P, uh, that P represents that the service is running. This is just nothing to do with the service, but uh, they, the, the Pandora is smart enough to put that into, into notification uh, area for you to see that the Pandora is still running. And then, excuse me. So, as I said, service can be started by the different activity and intent. I'm introducing a new word, intent, over here, which is a message passing mechanism into Android. So, activity pass intent to a service and say, start the service. Or a service can receive a message, a broadcast message from, from different activity and stop. So, let's take the example of Pandora itself. So Pandora, you start, you're listening to the music, and suddenly phone call comes. What happens? Your music stop playing, and, and your phone starts ringing. So basically, someone, one service, phone service, or something has broadcasted, and you hey, phone is coming. So all the services which is running in the background, those who want to shut them down, or pause, or whatever, please do that. And if you are a good citizen, you will do that. Uh, so that's what happened when, uh, when, when they receive an intent. And so as I mentioned, an intent is a message passing a mechanism in the Android. In Android, as I said, that two process, two applications run in absolutely separate processes. They cannot share the data. They cannot talk to each other in the whatever way they want. There is a definite way by which they will be sharing the data. There is a definite way by which they will be communicating to each other. That is how they communicate to each other. They, they make a kind of intent and it pass it to the uh, other process and say, this is what I intend to do, please do it. And if the other process is, is res uh, respect that intent or accept that intent, it will do the job. Intent and uh, the broadcast receiver, so intent is the message passing. Then broadcast receiver is the same, what I explained that. Any application who wants to listen for certain kind of events, they register them, uh, they, they register uh, uh, you know, uh, they mentioned that we are looking for this kind of intent. So if you have this kind of intent, please let us know. We will respond to that. So that's what the broadcast receiver uh, 
those folks, those who come from, from the G2ME background or BlackBerry, you might have heard about the push registry. This is something similar to, to that. Content provider, again, two applications, two processes written by two different developers. They cannot access each other data unless until the process the developer uh, wants or allow. So content provider is made for the same thing. If you want to share the data between two different applications, content provider is the way to go. You, you can access uh, some other application data by requesting to the content provider that, hey, I need this particular content or particular data. Uh, Google come with uh, some built-in content provider like to, to, to share the data like your contact list, to share the data like image, photos, and other information. Uh, so you can directly use those uh, built-in uh, content provider to get the data and to push the data in those content provider. You can push the data in those content provider by having the right permission. You cannot simply push because somebody is providing a way to push. You have to have the permission. And the user gives the permission that, OK, I'm, I'm OK to do that. Uh, if you want to. Uh, if you want to uh, publish the data in, in, in a content provider, you can certainly you know, provide the, uh, to the content provider saying that, hey, this is the content provider, and any other activity or any other application is feel free to, to ask me for this data, and I will be happy to give you. <laughs> notification, as I mentioned. Uh, this is the area notification. Those who are very familiar with the, with the uh, Android phone, or having phone, they would know that. You can drop down your notification window, and you can see in the detail. Everything handled over there is by notification manager. That's what I wanted to just say in this screen and move on. OK, so let's start the real stuff now. Uh, I would be happy to take the question, but I think we are running out of time. So let me finish. But if you, somebody has absolutely real question, please raise your hand, and I will be happy to answer. OK, good news. Uh, for those who don't have the Mac, they don't need to do, go through the Hackintosh <laughs> to, to develop their cool application, which runs on the iPhone. Forget about it. Buy a $200 HTC Evo, you know, and happy to go with that. Uh, so typically, this is the fourth thing you need. That's it. Uh, XP Mac or Linux machine, JDK 5 or 6, free, free. First one is not free. OK, it's first two. OK, and then the Android SDK, absolutely free. And then if uh, any, any ID of your choice, uh, Android started with e Eclipse, uh, I would say one of the major reasons would have been that in the beginning, they already supported the Eclipse, and then later, now I checked this morning uh, that they have uh, they have a good support for NetBeans as well. I haven't played myself with the NetBeans, but I would certainly suggest you to go with Eclipse uh, unless you're a fan of a specific ID. So these are the website you can go download pretty easy. There's a uh, there's a place called developer.android.com. Uh, if you if you been if you go to this, I, I would suggest anyone who's really serious about Android development. Go to this website. It has everything, everything you need to begin with. They have pretty good videos. You just watch, you know, relax. Just see those video, all the way from bottom to up. They have recording session from 2008, 2009, 2010. But just be careful when you're uh, watching the 2008 videos because they are all in present continuous tense. And they say we are doing like that, we are happening like that, and then. Suddenly you see the documentation, no, 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 it's not like that. And then you say, oh, this is 2008 video, you know. So, so make sure that, you know, you have that in mind when you're looking at this, those videos. But they're pretty good videos, very good reference, very good examples. And those things are there. So this is just to set up your environment. Okay, let's go. Uh, I would like to uh, mm, keep my finger crossed if everything goes fine. Uh, so once, how many of you develop in general on an Eclipse. Oh, wow. OK. OK, most, more than 60 70%. OK, that's pretty good. Uh, my screen here over here is much smaller than 
whereas so uh, let me allow a little difficulty to okay so I, I'm going to make a new project so 